Hey, good day, everyone, and welcome to another session of the Daily Elastic Bite. So today I want to quickly talk about um, Kibana and the user and role model within Kibana and Elasticsearch and how you can configure it uh, for the stack within Kibana. And I also want to talk quickly about Kibana Spaces as well as a relatively new feature called Anonymous Dashboards. So let's get started. The first look we should probably take is at the uh, DevTools stack management at the bottom left. And you see there is a security uh, point here. And we're going to take a look at it, each of those and go a little bit further. So things I will not cover today is um, secure communications. Uh, I just have the luxury of using an Elastic Cloud Cluster here, so everything gets set up already. All the communications are encrypted via TLS. I don't have to do anything. I don't have to import any CAEs into my browser or anything like that. That might need to happen if you run Elasticsearch internally and you have your own company CA. CA. Uh, but for now, we can just skip this one because it's part of Elastic Cloud. The next, next thing you always need to have is the ability to create users. Um, so every user of your system, be it a human or also be it a machine, might make sense to be their own user with their fine-grained privileges so that the user can only do what he or she is supposed to do. Um, so if we create a new user, we basically have to supply a username that is used for logging in. Uh, there's a full name and an email address optionally, a password, and the most interesting part are the roles. The roles are basically the deciding factor of what a user is capable of. And in order to understand that, we need to take another look at those roles. Uh, you can see over here, there's a lot of so-called reserved roles. So those are roles that get automatically created by the stack, and you don't have any influence on that. Um, and you can just decide to create another role. And in order to understand what the role definition is, uh, it basically means there's a role name that you can add. Uh, again, an arbitrary identifier that you can use. And then there are basically roles divided into two components. The first is what you're able to do within Elasticsearch. That is also subdivided on so-called cluster privileges. Those are all the talks, uh, tasks against an Elasticsearch cluster where you basically don't deal with any data on an index space. Uh, let's take a look here, like creating snapshots, um, managing API keys, managing auto scaling, um, managing rollups. So all these things that are not bound to a single index. You can also have something called run as privileges, which means you can run tasks for another user, kind of a pseudo mode if you want. And the last part are index privileges. So what you could do here is you could configure um, the commits index to be able to do anything with that. This means you could also delete it. You can change the mapping. You could add new documents. You could delete documents. Uh, you could also say, I just want to be able to read this index. You could go even further and say, only certain fields should be read, like the repo field in this example, or certain fields should definitely be denied. And you could also say only certain documents within this index are allowed to be read. So this would be another filter going in here. For example, if you have documents that should only be seen by the engineering department and the marketing department. So those are the roles. Those, this is quite the cornerstone of, of your definitions. But this was only the Elasticsearch part. The same also applies within Kibana. So what you can do here is you can configure privileges for space. We will cover in a second what a space is. Um, and then you can just say, this user should be able to do everything within the space. Or you could also limit what the user should see. So in this example, this would mean that we don't need maybe the observability or security uh, feature on the left side of the navigation bar. This is not so much a security feature, but more a simplification for the user of Kibana, if you want. And while we're talking about spaces, let's skip that for a second and go on to the API keys. Um, API keys are basically the possibility of creating a short-lived key with a certain set of privileges. So I could give this an arbitrary name. I could also restrict the privileges here, similar to the privileges that you just saw, so that a certain user could maybe only write into a certain index or into a certain kind of indices, uh, which might be needed for time-based data. And you can add an expiration so that after a certain amount of time, like in this example, in the next six days, this token expires and it's not usable anymore. So you don't have to do the work of, of disabling users. So API keys are a really good idea to create and also make a lot of sense to use with machine-to-machine -machine communication. 
The last part down here are role mappings. Role mappings are basically the ability to map the roles that a user has in another authentication system with the roles within an Elastic cluster. Um, a common example would be that you're actually not using the users within the Elastic stack, but you're using something like an identity provider. So that could be an Active Directory, an LDAP directory, or something like Okta in the backend. So you do some based authentication as identity provider. And then you could create some sort of mapping rules over here that the user is in a certain rule on the other system and should automatically be in a certain uh, role within our local system as well. And so you don't have to configure this for everything user. You configure it once, and then you keep doing your user management in the other upstream system. So we talked about spaces shortly. And I have an example space over here. We have the default space. That's the space I'm in right now. Um, you can change the default space to the Kibana dashboard only space. And once we do this, and we go back to the settings, we can already see over here that this space has not all the menu elements available because we only configure the analytics and management part for this. So again, this allows you to greatly simplify the look of Kibana for users who are not so familiar with the system. And on top of that, you can also make sure that this user cannot see dashboards or visualizations created in another space. So you're creating a, a neat separation if you want to. And users can also just create their own spaces. And if we go back to our stack management and go down to our spaces here, you can see that this Kibana dashboard only space um, basically has those three different features un unselected. And even within a single feature, you can configure what should be available and what should be hidden. So I created this Kibana dashboard only space because I would like to show that it's rather easy to um, have a so-called read-only user. And one thing that I did was creating the space. The other part that I did was creating a role that is a dashboard only role. This user basically only has read access to the Kibana sample data e-commerce index. You can see here it's a read privilege. And on top of that, I have configured my space here in the advanced settings. And what I did here, if you scroll down, is that I changed the default route to the standard dashboard that I would like to show. And this, in combination with the setting in Elastic Cloud that I'm about to show in a second, allows for the following, that you basically copy the URL above here in a private browser window. So I don't have any session. I'm not logged in. I just paste it over here. And I get forwarded to Elastic Cloud. And all of a sudden, I'm basically logged in into my private space here without any user and password request. You can see the whole dashboard as a user. You could just use it as a regular user. Uh, but everything is read-only, so you're not allowed to write any data over here. So before we finish this, let's take a quick look at this deployment. You can always go from within the uh, menu over here to manage this deployment. And all you need to do is basically configuring the right setting in Kibana for the anonymous dashboard. And to do that, we can just go to the Edit menu over here check out the Kibana setup in the Kibana YAML. And this is basically what you need to do. You have to specify the username and the password of the dashboard only user, who is the one who is only allowed or who is only this Kibana dashboard only role. And with that, you have the ability to have an anonymous dashboard within Elastic Cloud. Um, instead of username and password, if you don't want to store those, you could also just create the proper API key and paste the API key in here. All right, that was our short and quick introduction into Kibana user and roles. Uh, keep in mind that you have to take care of your roles. Um, make sure they are configured properly. As you can see, you can create anonymous dashboards. They don't require any login if you want. And go ahead from there and share data with other people. Thank you, and have a good evening or a good day. Goodbye, and see you next time.